Let's begin. So last time, we were talking about functions. Yes, absolutely. Constant and a var. OK, so for those of you who have done JavaScript in the past, JavaScript has three ways of declaring variables. Var, let, const. What are the differences? Uh, with be, the difference between var and let has to do with scoping, which is something we're going to talk about today. It has to do with scoping. One is block scope, one is functional scope. We'll cover this in a bit. However, with both var and let, you can change the value of the variable later. Right? So suppose you do var a and then you put 1 in it. Later, you can change it into a 2. Right? You can change the value of your variable. With a const, you cannot. A const is a, what it sounds like, a constant. So once you put a value in it, this value cannot change. That's the difference. Okay? Um, any other questions? So okay, another question that you may be asking yourself, uh, especially those of you who know JavaScript, is why are we not covering var and let? Why am I using const everywhere? That's weird. Well, uh, so there's this notion of functional programming, which is actually an advanced topic. It's something that you will probably cover later on in, in your careers. Uh, but the idea behind functional programming is that as you're writing your code, you don't change state. And that's a simple way of thinking about this is don't change the values of your variables. Every variable has its value. If you want something new, create a new variable. In practice, it turns out that when you write code in this way, you reduce the number of bugs in your code. I have experienced this myself, and I can tell you absolutely this is true. Right? So right off the bat, since we're learning programming from scratch, I'm trying to get you guys to think of code or writing code in a functional way. A lot of people think that functional programming just means using functions. No. Functions are certainly a part of it. But really, the key here is to make sure that you don't change state, so, which is why we're using consts. So I want you guys to start to learn things this way first, and then later we'll talk about for loops and variable mutation and so on, which you should know just so when you see code later you're not confused. But I want you to think about code functionally. Answer your question? John. Other questions? That's it? OK, let's get going. So we talked to everyone can see the code? Big? Good. All right, so let's create a variable. Uh, sorry, let's create a variable and put inside of it a function. Talk to me. The name of the function, so name, fine. Then what? Then what? Curly braces, and what does that mean? Start. Right, that's the start of the function. And then? End. The end of the function. Semicolon. semicolon, good. And again, the semicolon follows the same convention, right? Const foo, one, semicolon. Same idea. Good. OK, so let's have this function. Let's call it. How do I call the function? By the name. By the name. So if I didn't have a name for the function, could I call it from, from here? No. If I'm in the other room and I don't know your name, it's kind of difficult to call you, right? I mean, I can call, hey, you know, but then there are lots of you. It's hard to tell. So I have to know your name in order to identify you and reference you directly. So OK, so we say name. And how do I, that's it? Name? Right, open and close parentheses. So that means call, right? How do I modify this function so that it returns a number? Re return what? Give me a number. One. one. Good. OK, so this returned one. How come I'm not seeing anything down here? What happened? Right, so let me console log the result. So let me console.log that. Now we know that this function is going to return a 1, right? Which means in our heads, we can turn this 
it's into a one. It's the same thing. That eventually turns into that. Fair enough? Okay. Well, if that's the case, let's do another one. Const f1. Let's have that return two. Let's do another one. F3. And let's have this do uh, times F3 uh, plus um, F1. Yeah, that. What do I get? Four. Four. Let's go through it. So name will return one, which means this gets replaced with a one. F3 returns two. two. And F1 returns two. There you go. The answer is simple, right? Okay. So the next thing that we covered is this idea that a function can actually call another function, right? This allows you to compose pieces of your code together. Think of programming as Lego blocks, right? Think about it. When you're building Legos, right, when you're working with Legos, you have these individual blocks, but then you can kind of stick them together to build more and more complicated things, right? So what we can do then is create a series of functions, const f1 for example, and let's have this function add numbers together. So let's do a and b and have it return a plus b. Let's have another one, const f2, which let's say takes two numbers and does what? I don't know. Give me something. Multiply, fine. A times B. Now, notice the names that I used. F1. It's difficult to tell that F1 means a function that adds numbers together, right? So it turns out that one of the things that programmers spend a lot of time doing is figuring out how to name their variables so that it's clear and easy to understand. F1 is not very easy to understand, right? Because Right, right. So you can name it something better like, I think I, add, yeah. So let's call this add. What about this? Yeah, something like that, right? Good. So this is very important. As you name your variables, instead of just naming them like A, B, and things like that, try to name them things that make sense, that actually match the, what they actually are, right? Call it age, call it weight, call it height, call it what it actually is. Okay, good. Now we can create another function. I don't know, let's just call this one func because I don't know what it is. Um, and it will take two numbers, a and b. And what I want it to do is to return uh, the addition plus its multiplication. Yeah, addition plus multiplication. In other words, I want it to return add uh, multi a and b and the addition, A and B. So let's go through this. Again, remember, anytime you see something that looks more complicated, just make it simpler, just simplify it. Do it one piece at a time. Let's look at this one piece. So we know that A gets four and B gets five, right? Okay, so multi is a function that will take four and five and multiply them together. The result is, so let's replace that with a 20. Add will take 4 and 5 and return their sum. 9, good. Add will take 20 and 9 and return their sum, 29. You get 29, and so this turns into a 29. Make sense? Really? Okay, uh, is no questions? Questions so far? None. Good. Okay, let's uh, complicate things even more. Let's multiply A and the addition of B and 20. Let me do that. There you go. That fits, right? Good. What's the value now? Okay, again, one piece at a time. What is B? 
B is the 5 that gets passed into here, right? That's 25, that's right. 25. What is A? It's this 4 that gets passed here, right? So this is 4. 4 times 25 is 100. Add A and B, which is 4 and 5. Right, so this becomes a 9. Then we add those together and we get a 109. Do you see how you can now very easily write code in different functions and then use them in different combinations? So you can compose more and more complex things, right? Okay. Okay. Here's another one. So we know that a function is a value, right? I just made a function. What is the value of z? I got a nothing, I got a function, anything else? OK, to make this simpler for you, look, what is the value of z? What is the value of z? Right. In the same way that I can do, look, const a 1, I can also do const a function, right? So a function is just a value that can be placed into a variable, right? So in the same way that 1 can be placed into a variable and a function can be placed into a variable, a function can return a 1 or a function can return another function. With me so far? Yes, good. So now let's have this function return a 1. What is the value of z? I got a function. Anything else? I got a 1. Anything else? Good, all right, there's nothing else left. You can make things up. Okay, um, we're returning, returning that, right? What is that? It's a, func it's a function. We're returning a function, which means when you call f, you get back function, function. not one, function. It's a function that inside of it, has code. And the code in this case is for it to return a 1. So now if z has a function in it, what can I do with z? Oh, sorry, I called it var. Sorry, I meant. Okay. Con uh, const. Good. So now I can z, oh, so z, I can call z. Const b. Now what is the value of b? Okay, look, f has a function in it. This is the function that's inside of f. Look, I call f, the body of, the of f this function runs. The body of the function says, the body being this start and this end, all the code in between. It runs, it says return that. So this returns, this turns into this function and gets put into z. So now z has this function in it. It's the same thing as if I did, wait for it, that. This is the same thing as that. This is the same thing as that. This is, you guys get it? Good. Okay, so now z has this function in it. I then call z, which is this function. And what retur gets returned by this function? A 1, which means this returns a 1. Actually, this turns into a 1 and gets assigned to b. Yes? Okay. So before we continue on, there's more with functions. And we're going to do a lot. We're going to pass function as arguments to functions. 
We're going to do return functions that return functions. This kind of thing can get very, like, more and more complicated. And we will talk about that. But before we do, I want to discuss variable scoping. So what do I mean by variable scoping? So we all know what a variable is. OK, it's a container, and you have code inside of it. Fine. Or sorry, you have a value inside of it. Fine. It has a name, so you can refer to that value. right? But here's the question. Depending on where you are in your code, you can only access certain variables. OK? So your code is going to have lots of variables in it, but depending on where you are, you can only see certain variables within that context, within that scope, if you will. So let me explain how this works. Um, so if you're just using regular const, right? Obviously, if you're on the same level, as in I've made a const a, from here I can access a. From here I can access f, from here I can access z, and from here I can access b. Actually, from here I can access A, F, Z, and B. You can almost think of this as everything that's kind of on the same line, you can access, as long as the order matches. Here's where things get trickier. Let's create a function, or we have one already. Const B, const B, 2. And then in here I have a B. Sorry, let me give it a different, there. So A is called by 24. So 24 goes inside of B, right? This B that's in here is not the same as the B that's up there. The function, this that has the beginning that and end of that inside of it, has what are known as local variables. Local variables are the variables that are closest to it. They're in, within their, its sort of working area. It's local. It's just here. However, suppose I did this. Suppose I called it something different, like z, and then returned z plus b. Here's what happens now. So we call this function. z gets the value of 24. We then go here and say z. Do I have a local z? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Where is it? Right there. Right? That's the local z. Next question. B. Do I have a b created in this block? No. no. So what I do is I go up. So from this function, go up. So leave the function and go here. At that level, do I have a B? Yeah, yeah. yeah, there it is. And it has 2 in it, right? So what this would do is it would do 24, which is local, plus B, which is just up there, with a value of 2. And therefore, you would get 26. Let me complicate this even further. Let's have this return another function, which takes a Y. There you go, const uh, a2. What is the value of a2? Well, think about it. This is a. I called a. What does a, the a is this function here, right? What does it return? A function. This guy right here, right? This. So that turns into that, or returns that, I should say. And then that function is assigned into A2, right? So now A2 holds this function here. So now I can then call uh, A2, and that will now run this here. Now let me give that an argument as well, like a 7, and have this return z plus y plus b. And let me console.log b2. There you go. How did this work? Here's how. We call A, which returns this function to us, and we put it into A2. We call A2, which runs this code here. We check Z. Do I have a local Z? No. no. So I have to, from this function, go up. 
right? Do I have a z at this level? Yeah, there it is, right? Which was passed to me as 24, right? So I get 24 from here. Good. So this turns into 24, yeah? Plus y. Do I have a local y? Yes. There it is, which was 7, seven right? OK, so I get 24 plus 7 plus b. Do I have a local b? No. Go up 1. Do I have a local b? No. Go up 1. Yes, there it is, 2. So what I get is 24 plus 7 plus 2, 33. OK, so it's very important that you understand variable scoping, so we're going to keep going. Uh, what's a good example I can give you? Const f function. Const, const f2. Const f3. Return f2 plus f3. And then let's have f2 return uh, a, which is going to have a local a. f3 return b times c, where c is there. b is const b is something there. And then there's a const z here somewhere. And let's have this be that divide. Oh, no, let's do something simple. Plus z. Uh, what else can I do to really mix things up here? I know, const f4, which takes, um, yeah, maybe that's enough. Now, how much on Okay. Uh, so then I call f, and I print it, console.log f. There. Okay, so... It's not hard. Just break it up into parts. So we create a z. We put a 5 in it. We create an f. We put this big function in it. Then we print calling the function. So whatever the function returns is what we will print, right? OK, so called it. Let's go into f. I think I have a gadget. OK. so. Here we call f and we go into f, right? So we end up here. So we create a variable within this, starting from there, ending from there. We create a variable called b and we put a 3 inside. Create a function, create a function, don't worry about it. Call f2, which is, a which is that right there, yes? In here, we pass, ooh, wait, sorry, one second, one second, one second. Let's give a a 3, and let's give that a 5. Good. OK, that's what I meant to do. OK. So we call f2 with a 3. f2 is there. a will get the 3. Right? That goes there. With me? OK, so a gets the 3. So when we're resolving the variables, we say, do we have a local a? We do. It's this guy right here, right? OK, so we're good. We're trying to resolve z. Is there a z just within this, this area here? No. So we go up one. Is there a z within this area? No. So we go up one. Is there a z? There it is. So we take that z, which has a value of 5. So we get 5 there, right? So we get 3 and 5, right? So we get 8 right here. So this turns into 8. Let me change that for you. So this turns into an 8. OK, then f3, which is right there. So we pass the 5 to the c. So c, so then we have a b here. Do we have a b declared in this? So we go up. So we go up. Is there a b within this? There it is, right there. Right? So we take the 3, 3 times 5, 15. So we turn this into a 15. And then we add them together and get 23. Now, if this seems complicated for you, or to you, I should say, uh, how can we see how this code is working? Debugger. Debugger. Come on in. 
or not. Um, let's inspect. All right, let me zoom in. OK, watch how this code works live, if you will. Wait, shotgun not see. Miropa? There we go. OK, remember that this steps to the next thing, and this goes in, into a function, right? Remember those two things. So we go next. OK, we can see here that z now has a 5 in it. We can see here that f has a function in it. And then we're going to go in in order to be able to go into this call. So we go in. Now we're inside the call. Here, look at this. It says what my local variables are. It says locally I have a b. I'm also going to get these two, these two uh, variables soon. And then globally, or just above it, I have an f, which is this function here, and a z, which is that right there. Right? So you can see it. The, the debugger tells you exactly what's happening. So we create a function. We create a function. Now let's step into f2. Incidentally, the thing that you will step into is the first function call. Okay? So the first function call here is f2. So let's step into f2. There it is. a has a value of 3. z, as you can see here, has a value of 5. Again, why? Because we go up here. There's no z. We go up here. There's a z. Boom. 5. It will return the 3, which has a is 3, plus z, which is 5, so 8. Then we'll step in again into the f3 call. There you go. In this case, c has a value of 5, which is what we passed in, and b has a value of 3, right, from here. It doesn't have one locally, so it would go up, and there it is. And we print. And we get 23. Does that make sense? OK, but here's the thing. You can only go up. You cannot go down. What I mean by this is if I create a, if I create a function, and then inside of this function, I make a variable. From here, I can never access z. Got it? So outside of the function, I can't, ha I ca because then I have to go into the function, right? Can't do that. You can only go up. You cannot go down. Does that make sense? Sort of? Questions so far? No questions. Oh, is there? No, nothing? No questions. Everyone's just looking around, wondering if they figured it out. OK. Love. Watch this. So we know that functions can return functions. So this takes an A, this takes a B, and this takes a C, and there's also a D somewhere. Uh, let's see, let's call it F1. What is the value of F1? Yeah, so it's, so we call F, which is, which is this function here, it returns this function which has a beginning there and an end there, right? So that whole function, this whole function, gets returned and in this case assigned to f1. So f1 now has a reference to this function there. Okay. We then call f1 with a 7. Now what? The last, the last function, yeah. So if f1 had a reference to this function here, when we call it, it returns this stuff right here, right? This. So now this goes into f2. Good. Let's keep going.
what is the value of F3? So F2, sorry, F, what is the value of F3? Undefined? Why? Because F2 is this function here, right? What does it return? Nothing. In JavaScript, nothing is undefined. So therefore, F3 gets undefined, right? OK, let's change that. Let's instead have this function return a plus b plus c plus d. Now what does f3 have? Well, look, think about it as far as variable resolution, right? We called f originally with a 9. So an a took on the value of 9, right? It's a variable that has a value of 9. It then returned a function that then we called with a value of 7. So b took 7. It then returned a function which we called with a 2, so 2 went into c. When we run this function, we say, hey, a, do we have a local a? Yeah. No. So we go up. Is there an a here? Yeah. Nope. We go up. Is there an a here? Yes. Yeah, there it is. And that had a value of 9, right? So this takes 9. B, is there a local B in this area here? No. no. Go up. Is there a B here? Yes. There it is. Which has a value of 7. C is a local, right? There it is. That has a value of 2. Is there a local D? No. Is there a D at this level? Is there a D at that level? No. Is there a D at that level? Yes. There it is. D3. Boom. OK. What if I did const d 9? Again, following the same logic, when this executes, it will say, do I have a local d? No. Do I have a local d? Yes. Boom. So it takes the first one on the way up. It does not keep going. Right? So it starts here, checks up one, checks up, and it keeps going until it finds it. Make sense? Variable scope. Yes? Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't. It's the, the editor, the code mirror editor that I'm using colored it that way. Why did it color it that way? I honestly don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't, maybe? Let's see. Let's make another one. Const. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, maybe this is a global and the function ones have a different coloring. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're right. I agree with you. So I didn't change the value of D. D still has, this D still has a 3 in it. This is a different variable. It's a completely different. So I have two variables, one inside of this scope and another inside of, which means if I had code here, if I had, oh, this is going to be weird. No, I can't. Um, but if I had code for some reason, I, I was doing const zubar equals d plus a, or plus a. It, zubar is not actually used, but let's pretend I was doing that. If it ran, it would use that d. But this one, this one uses that d. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. In this case, nothing. It, it will work exactly the same way. So also with let, it would work exactly the same way in this code. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Good? OK. So now, let's get really, really tricky. Functions are values. I will repeat that one more time. It takes an A, and it returns calling A. Yeah, that. 
what is the value that will be printed? That is to say, what is B? Yes, sir. What did I do? That right there? So forgetting what I just wrote for a second, I'm going to create a simple function which is going to take an A. It is going to return A. Sorry, return 1. Or return, it doesn't matter, return 1. And then I call f1 and I pass an, a value. Okay, fine, let's have it return A. There. I'm passing a 3, right? Yes? yes? Question, why do I have this? Yeah, express what you just said in words. Right? Why, why did I open the brackets? Right, so remember in JavaScript the way to call a function is to open a bracket and then close it. If you want to pass information to the function, you put the information inside your, your parentheses, right? So in this case what we're saying is we're calling f1 and we're passing 3 which goes to a, right? Yeah, with me so far? So now let's replace 3 with another value that we know. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is that you uh, in code f we call uh, a function a, not, not the variable a, uh, a function. We don't need parentheses around it. Are you talking about this part here or are you talking about this here? Yeah. Okay, so listen. I am calling f, which is this. What is the value that I'm passing to it? It's all of this, right? So that's the same thing as doing, hang on. Right? Yes, you guys see how it's the same thing? Okay, if it's the same thing, then I want to return the result of calling a. What is the result of calling A? A is a function. What does it return? Three. 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 So the result of calling A will return a three. In other words, this whole thing will return a three. Okay, here's another one. Let me have this instead no, that's more complicated. Hang on, I want you to understand this one first. Okay, let me, let me give it two functions, a and b. Let me give it another function and have it return a four, five. I want to return, if I do this, what does that mean? I'm like adding two functions together, which doesn't make sense, right? Why would you add functions together? So what I want to do is instead get the value of the function. So I want to call the function and see what it returns. And I want to add that to the result of calling the other function and see what it returns. So if a is this function, which returns a 3, and b is this function, which returns a 5, calling a and adding the result of that to calling b, is going to return 8. Make sense? This, is, this should not be too confusing because in the same way that we're passing numbers or any other value to a function, you can pass a function to a function. In the same way that a function can return a number, it can return a boolean, it can return a string, it can return a function. The only thing that I want you to, to, to have, be careful about is knowing when you're referring to a function and when you're calling a function. Remember to call a function, let's say this is our function, if you have to do something like this to call it. If you don't do that, you're only referring to it. This is me saying Jacob. This is me saying Jacob Gorsara. 
right? This is just a reference. This is a call to action. Let's go through this a little bit more. By the way, hands up if you're confused. Keep going. Look how many, all these people are confused. Keep going. Yeah, see, hands are coming up. Good. Okay, let's see if we can remove some of this confusion. We have variables that can store values. Anyone who can't understand that? We understand that. Good. So we have a variable, A, that can have a value. There it is. Variable with a value. We have functions, which is just packages of code that can run when you call it. In the same way that we can store a one inside of a variable, we can store one of these functions inside of a variable. That is to say we can give it a name. So let's give it a name. So let's do const f, call it a function, f, and then put it into it a function. There you go. We now have a function that's inside of a variable called f. Good so far? Front row, good, okay. We can now call f, front row. How do we call a function? Right, so calling a function is like that. A function has the ability to take information from us, to receive information. The way it receives information is by variables. So you give it a variable here, you give it a value here, and this value will go into that variable when it's called. Is that clear? Good. Functions, in addition to taking inputs or taking in information, can also return information. The way to return something is to call return and then the thing you want to return, which let's say is A or A plus 1. So now in this case, if we're pass calling F with a 4, A gets a 4, 4 plus 1 is a 5, and that is returned by the function. So this turns into, you can, in your head, you can think of this as a 5. That turns into that. So far so good? Good. Anyone confused up until that point? Okay. Let's keep going. Just mix these two together. Mix which two, Jenna? Uh, const f is equal to function a and return a plus are you, one. Are you talking about this one here? The two sentences together. Which sentences, Jenna? I'm listening. I'm listening. Go ahead. Which, which sentences? The second, const f is equal to yes, that, and one that is this here? So this, okay, so this is a function which has a start and end, right? Between these two, from here and here, you can write code. Uh, can I write a function and in the parentheses a plus one? No, no. So th the parentheses here are only there to take values in. You can't do operations. You can just say, give me something. Give me a number, give me a function, give me something. And when, you, when they give it to you, it comes with that name, right? So I give you a 4, you refer to that 4 as A, right? That way I can give you a 4, a 9, whatever, you just know it as A. And then your job is to simply add A to a 1 and tell me the answer. Telling me implies returning. So you're, think of it this way, I give you something and you return something back, yeah? So I give you something as an argument you do whatever it is that you do, and then return to me an answer. Make sense? Okay. So the value that is returned is the value that this ultimately represents, which is a 5, right? This basically turns into that. So that means if we can imagine this as turning into that, then if I say const z that, that's the same thing as that, right? So if I were to ask you what is the value of z, you would tell me, five. boom, there you go. So now, what if I did plus f, what if I did that? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, front row, yeah, go. Five plus seven. Five plus seven, very good. Exactly, so z would have that value, right? You see, simple. 
So then, now what if I did f of that? Go. What do you think? Yeah. Uh-huh. Thirteen. Very good. Yeah, because we established that f four plus f four plus f six is twelve. If we then so this middle part turns into a twelve, right? If we then cut So it takes a twelve. So then if we do twelve plus one we get thirteen, so therefore this turns into a thirteen. Clear? Yes? Easy. OK, so we understand functions. We understand inputs to functions, and we understand outputs from a function. Yes, sir? If we will delay the 11 in a bracket, we will get 2. If we do 11, yeah. So if we do this, if we did this, what do you mean by delay? I'm sorry. Oh, if I just do that, uh, hang on, I don't know. I'm guessing nan, but oh, sorry, I sorry, hang on, hang on, hang on, not that. This, hang on, hang on, nan, yeah. Very good. I understand what you're asking. Okay, let me explain. Very good question. So what's your name, sir? Nautic. Nautic. So Nautic is asking a very good question. He's saying, look, we have an A up here that has a 1 inside, right? So how come when, even though A is undefined, how come we don't just say we don't have a local A and go up? Yeah, because Nautic, John, because having a variable doesn't mean that the variable has to have a value. We do have a variable right there. It just happens to be undefined, right? It has no value. So we still have a local A, there it is. It's just undefined. Does that make sense? Remember the way we find the variables, is only if we don't have a local one, then we go up. And we keep doing this until we find it. But we have one there. Yeah? Exactly, right? And undefined plus one will return nan, right? Not a number. Other, this is great, other questions? Okay. Um, da, da, da. Okay, let's do this. What does that return? Do you see why? Because in this case, as Nautic mentioned, he was talking about A, right? Now we don't have a local A. So we go up and we find this one, which has a 1 inside. Therefore, this becomes a 1. 1 plus 1 returns a 2. And therefore, calling this will return a 2. And then we print z, which prints 2. OK, good. So now, again, let's get a little bit more interesting. Let's talk about, yes. No. So in JavaScript, it's OK to return to give it no value, because no value simply means undefined. So in this case, C would simply have a value of undefined. Make sense? OK. Other questions? But, in, in, but you make a good point, by the way, because in other programming languages like Java and C++, if there's a parameter, you have to pass a value for it. So I understand where you're coming from. In JavaScript, you don't have to. Yeah, let's do it. So, fair enough? Other questions? Keep going? Okay. All right, so, cost f is a function which is going to take a function. It's going to return a function, 
And when this function is called, it is going to return calling the original function plus the value that you give it. Yeah, I think that's good. OK, so now let's call f with a function. Before we move forward, look, this is f, right? That's f. We take this whole value here from there until there, and we pass it there. So func takes that function, right? Let's give that function some capability. Let's return, I don't know, 9. So now this func is a function that returns 9, right? OK. Then we have this return a function. So by calling this, what gets returned to z is this function here. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I don't quite get the idea of what we're like returning it times over and over again. No, you're returning you're calling a function. Look, a function is a value, right? If I call a function to add two numbers, it will give me a number, right? The addition of the two numbers. If I call a function to say concatenate two strings together, it will return a string, which will be the concatenation of the two strings, right? In the same way that I can have a function return to me strings, or I can have a function return to me numbers, I can have a function return to me another function. Make sense? Good, OK. So this function returns that function. So when I call this function, it's going to return this function here and put it into z. So z now has a reference to this. of these two functions? It has a reference to this guy. Look, we're returning that, right? So whatever you return is the value that you get back. OK? With me so far? So, what value? Are you talking about this here? Oh, this. OK, so this hasn't run yet. This is just a function that is inside of func. We have not touched it yet. We'll touch it down here. We're just returning this function, which inside has code. And that code does include a reference to that function. You get it? OK, then now if I call z and I give it another value like a 1, What is now the value of v? 10. So what will happen is it will run func. Remember, func is this function that we passed in. Running it means it goes and it returns a 9. So that means this here is a 9. That a is whatever gets passed here, which was this one. This gets passed here, gets here. So you get 10 plus 1 and get returned 10. Questions? All those people that were super confused. If you're still, con be brave. Be honest. If you're still confused, it's OK. Put your hands up. OK, so I got confusion. Confu I got three people who are brave here. One more. Brave, brave. Bra Ooh, John. OK, confusion, confused, confu OK, wow, that's like eight people. OK. OK, question. Of those people who are confused, are you confused by functions, what they get as inputs, or what, and what they get as outputs? Any of those three things. Is that clear? That functions are code, you can call them, give them inputs, they get outputs. Is that part clear? Are you confused by variable scoping? If you're confused by variable scoping, put your hands up. As in, by variable scoping, again, I simply mean from what part of the code you can reference a variable. That's what I mean by variable scope. If you have the same variable with different, you know, the same name in different parts, 
which variable are you using? This is what I mean by scoping. Is that confusing to anyone? Good, yeah, good, okay, two people, okay. Is the confusion that functions can return functions? Hands up if that's confusing. So what are you confused about? <laughs> it seems like, you're like, I'm confused, which part? I don't know. That's <laughs> confused them. No. Okay, no problem, no problem. You have a question. Yeah, it okay, so computers will only do what you ask of them and unless you say print, it will not print. Are we saying print? No, no. So the only way to print is like Yeah, for now. Yeah. I mean, in JavaScript you can like sh print to the HTML and stuff like that. We'll do that later. For now just console log, yeah? In no, no, no. John. Wow, that, that's Akik, what else? If it's that simple. Hatska? No other questions? Okay, the whole question was about console logging. If you don't console log, it won't actually print anything. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Can you do variable scoping? For, I, sorry, you're really far away. Can you skip? Oh, you want me to do the, show you the scoping stuff in this code here? Yeah? Okay, yeah, absolutely, of course. Okay, so look. We pass this function here, which goes here, right? Hang on, let me get, the thing is, this is too easy. Let me give you something like, imagine you have a const func here, which does nothing, and then you have a const a here. Okay. So you have these two values represented here by variables, right? But then when you call f, you give this to this local variable. So this function goes into that. So func represents this function here. Then it returns this function, which gets stored inside of z. Then when you call z with a 1, it comes here, a takes 1. When we come here to see func, is func anywhere inside of here, declared inside of there, yes or no? Stech funk stech zweda? No. Okay, so we go up one. Was function declared anywhere here? Yeah, right there. So it takes this one. It does not keep going and take the one up there that I made. It takes this one because it comes sooner. Was that what you were looking for? Yeah, okay. Console log will write to the console. Document.write will actually write into your HTML. Yeah, to literally the document, the actual one, the part that you can see. With console log, you have to open up the like uh, the inspector or whatever, the Chrome DevTools. Go to console and then see it there. Hmm? Uh, other questions? Okay. So here's one. Here's a tricky one. <laughs> Okay, watch this. So people fail this during interviews all the time. If you're ever going to go to a JavaScript interview, know this, because I ask this question. Watch this. There is a constant. Uh, so this is the only part you need. What is the value that you get back? Do we have one of these? Oh, we do. All right, I heard a five. Hands up if you think it's a five. Okay, so five gets a one. Okay. What's another value you think it might be? Two. All right, hands up if you think it could be a two. One, two. 
Where's the original guy? <laughs> Three, four. All right, four. Any other numbers? So everyone, so we got one person who thinks it's a five, four people it's a two, and everyone else just goes for the ride. Okay. No problem. So here's the, here's the trick. Remember what I told you. The function, so here's the trick. It's not where it's called, it's where it's declared that matters. In other words, it's where you make the function, not where you use it. This function was made here, not there. It was made here, right? Is there a B here? You get it? So it returns a 1, A is a 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so the four people that raised their hand, good job. Jen, is that clear? People often think it's this. They think, okay, it's running here, it's looking for a B, there's no B here, so it goes up and finds this, right? You can almost think of that, it's, it makes somewhat logical sense, but wrong. It's based on where it's made, where it's declared. It's declared here, therefore it's this B here. Even though it runs there. <coughs> Make sense? It's a good question to know. Questions so far? All right. <laughs> Uh, those who you know who you are, just don't say anything. <laughs> Anyone else? You know? Okay, good. We got. What do you think it is? Eight. Okay. I got a two. Okay, hang on. I got an. I like this. Another competition. <laughs> All right, so I got an eight. I got a two somewhere. Sorry, you take it back. Come on, man. Oh, me, you too. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer is me too. What, uh, anyone else? Okay, you think it's eight. And you are right. Yes, JavaScript is awesome. All right. So look, we call V with a three. So A takes a three, right? Remember this. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Hang on. What's the value now? Is it me too? Uh, it didn't change. So let me explain why. Again, remember, it's not where it's called. It's where it's declared that matters. The declaration is where you start with when you go finding the variable. So when you call v with a 3, a takes a 3, right? You then declare, which is a fancy way of saying make, a function. Right? So you make a function, you declare a function here. We made the function here, not there. Made it here, right? If we made it here, that means when you're looking for A, you go up here and you find that one. You don't go up here. It's made here, so you go up there. Make sense? Okay. And if you think about it for yourselves, it's easier to think about because you can see the code. You see the code, it's here. So if you want to go up, you just go up the code. Don't go finding how it's used. You see the declaration of the function, just go up and you can see what's above it. Okay? Okay, 
And then b is obviously this one, which is the 5, right, passed into b. And then it's that a plus that b, which is that 3 plus that 5. 8, yes? Good question. Very good question. So suppose we change this to a z. Now we get a 26. You're right. Why? So the reason is, notice how this function here gets called way down here. So after a has been made and b has been made, right? So because a and b have already been made, they are in this bigger scope, right? So when we start here, we say, okay, there's no a, uh, sorry, there's no b. We go up here, there's no b. When we go up to this level here, this level here, b is in that level, in this level. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. How much time do we have? Ooh, two minutes. Okay. Let's do recursion quickly. So what is recursion? Yeah, it's recursion, reoccurring, right? The, the function reoccurs, it's recursion. To understand recursion, you have to know recursion. <laughs> okay, so const uh, f um, takes an a. Here's what I want to do. Listen, I want a function that will return to me a string. The string will have stars in it, like that, right? Or like that, or like that. So the way I would do that is I would just say return that, right? And then I would just call f, and that would give me stars that I can then sol.log. <coughs> And there they are, right? So I've taken these stars that I had returned and I logged it to get stars. Yes? Here's the trick. I want to give it a value like a nine and I want to say print or give me a string that has that many stars inside of it. Other than the people who were at office hours, does anyone have a, yeah, you were at office hours. Other, do you have a solution for me? Raise your hand if you do. Yes. So the goal is to have your function return a string with stars in it. The number of stars in the string have to be determined by this number. So if I give it a 9, I get a string with 9 stars in it. If I give it 100, I want a string with 100 stars in it. I have another one. Hang on. Another one. Another one. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Do you have a, do you, do you have a solution? You do? Okay, put your hand up. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Not bad. Okay, you put your hands up. You put your hand up first. Can I? Uh, no. Yeah, yes, sir. We put if. If A is less than 9. No. Okay, so tell me how, what you mean by put, so okay, so let's write exactly what you're saying. So you're saying if A is greater than zero, is that what you said? Okay, now what? Then what? Then A minus minus. So, okay, I should, so let me add a constraint. Oh man, we're already over, over, out of time. Okay, someone quick give me an answer. Don't, don't modify, without modifying a variable. Go. If a is less than 9, call the function with a plus 1. If a is less than 9, call the function with a plus, plus 1. It's going to be an infinite, right? 9, 10, 11, 12. It's never going to be less than 9. No, a is like, uh, start with 1 down there. The down, then how do I know? But I want, it, I want to decide what the value is by the argument. I want it to say, give me 100, and you give me 100 stars. I want to see. All right, we got people waiting. Don't worry about it. A is bigger than zero, and A is minus one. 
OK, good. All good answers. So think about this problem, and we'll discuss it the day after tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming. Artsokov Karen. Hey! Jan. Alpik. Bravo. Good job.